A piece of space debris not much wider than a millimeter has smashed a hole through an important part of the International Space Station. Here are the details. Science Alert reports that a piece of space debris has hit and damaged part of the International Space Station. Photos released by NASA shows a small hole that had been punched through the station's Canadarm2 robotic arm. The arm has been a fixture on the ISS for 20 years. It's a multi-jointed titanium robotic arm that can assist with maneuvering objects outside the ISS. It's unclear exactly when the impact occurred. The damage was first noticed on May 12th during a routine inspection. NASA says the robotic arm seems to be working normally despite the damage. The space debris problem does seem to be increasing. Last year, the ISS had to perform emergency maneuvers three times to avoid collisions with space debris at its altitude of around 400 kilometers. An estimated 130 million fragments of man-made material smaller than a millimeter are orbiting Earth right now. Over 23,000 pieces bigger than a softball are being tracked in low Earth orbit to help satellites and the ISS avoid collisions, but the millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. Earth's superpowers have added to this space debris by blowing up satellites with missiles in the past. The latest to do so was China, who blew up one of its orbiting satellites in 2007, adding more than 2 million pieces of scrap larger than a millimeter in size. In Earth's orbit, small fragments like that can travel at speeds of around 32,000 km per hour, each with the potential to cause more damage than a shell fired from a tank. The Guardian newspaper revealed that China has likely been spying on U.S. citizens via Caribbean phone networks for years. The paper based its article on research by Gary Miller, a former mobile network security executive. Miller has been analyzing sensitive signals data for years and says China appears to have used mobile phone networks in the Caribbean to surveil U.S. mobile phone subscribers as part of its espionage campaign against Americans. He says that China uses one of its state-controlled phone operators to direct signaling messages to U.S. subscribers, usually while they're traveling abroad. Signaling messages are commands that are sent by telecoms operators across the global network. They allow operators to locate mobile phones and connect users to one another. But some signaling messages can be used for tracking, monitoring, or intercepting communications. Miller said that China has lately favored more targeted espionage and are likely using Caribbean networks as proxies to conduct its attacks, having close ties with these countries in both trade and technology investment. MIT analyzed the infamous chaos hack that targeted iPhones and found evidence suggesting the Chinese government is using civilian hacking competitions to find new hacks for a strategic hacking program, saying that China seemed to have used such a hack as part of its genocidal strategy to erase its Muslim minority. Here are the details. MIT's Technology Review magazine recently analyzed the infamous chaos hack that targeted iPhones in 2018, suggesting that China used a civilian competition to create the hack and then used it to spy on its Uyghur Muslim minority. The U.S. accuses China of committing genocide against its Uyghur population. The magazine linked the hack to a statement made in 2017 by the CEO of the Chinese cybersecurity giant Qihu 360 when he said Chinese hackers should stop participating in international hacking competitions as such competitions give tech companies the chance to fix the hacks before China could use it to spy on people. The Chinese government agreed, forbidding its hackers to participate in such competitions. The next year, the first Tianfu Cup competition was held in China, where citizens are forced by law to help Chinese spy agencies. The magazine says that U.S. officials and tech companies later found that the prize-winning hack at that Tianfu Cup was very similar to the hack used later that year to infiltrate iPhones used by Uyghurs. For the past seven years, China has committed human rights abuses against the Uyghur people and other minority groups in the western province of Xinjiang. Well-documented aspects of the campaign include detention camps, systemic compulsory sterilization, organized torture and rape, forced labor, and an unparalleled surveillance effort. The U.S. and a number of other countries have called the actions a genocide. Twenty years ago, if someone suggested that their water heater was spying on them, you would have had to ask them if they needed some time off work. These days, they're probably right. Especially if they've got one particular type of TV. Here's how that works. A Chinese analytics company has been collecting personal data from Skyworth brand smart TVs without users' consent, scanning their Wi-Fi every 10 minutes and uploading information according to protocol. The practice was revealed by a user who noticed their TV was being slow and analyzed back-end program code to find out why. What they found was a program by Beijing-based Gozen Data. 
According to the user, the program not only tracked activity on Skyworth smart TVs, it also tracked smart device activity near the TVs. A Skyworth spokesperson in Hong Kong told Apple Daily that it denied intruding on people's privacy, saying instead that it collected user data to facilitate personalized advertising. Protocol reports statements on Gozen's website that say its data collection service covers 149 million households, 140 million smart TVs, and 457 million people in China. Smart devices are increasingly prevalent in homes across China, and Protocol reports Weibo users shared concerns over security, noting how everything from stoves to kitchen hoods to water heaters is now linking up to the internet. Although the story arrives as the Chinese government has introduced new regulations protecting personal data and limiting its collection via mobile apps, according to the South China Morning Post, many will be familiar with China's existing privacy issues. China has eight of the world's ten most surveilled cities based on the number of cameras per 1,000 people, according to UK-based research firm Comparatech, cited by CNN. The U.S. is currently fighting a massive hack that came to light on December 13th when Reuters reported that hackers had gained access to U.S. Treasury and Commerce Department emails. Since then, officials say that at least six government agencies were infiltrated and thousands of companies were infected with malware. The highly sophisticated hack was first discovered by a cybersecurity firm called FireEye. The company found that it had itself been hacked, meaning that the hackers could have hacked the powerful tools FireEye used to access top-secret systems. Researchers later found that SolarWinds software was at the core of the hack. They believe a SolarWinds product called Orion spread the malware via its own software updates. Once downloaded, the malware signaled back to its operators where it had landed. In cases where access was especially valuable, the hackers then used it to deploy more active malicious software to spread across its host. Part of the problem is that most people don't even know they have parts of SolarWinds software running on their systems or on systems they use every day. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.